sorry about that. <laughs> Morgan Lynn is a psychic empath and clairvoyant and author of The Spirit and Human, which she has at, in her booth. And uh, please help me welcome Morgan Lynn. <laughs> out too thin. And I did. I completely spread out when you did that, right? Right. Right. It's just like, <laughs> right? So, and that's that's an okay thing. Nothing is ever wrong. It's just that it doesn't work long term because then what happens is you forget who you are because you're picking attributes and virtues and, and the, the negative traits from other people and so then you kind of get lost in the mix. Okay. And I felt it. It as or come to open myself up so that I get everything that you have to say so I understand that that probably wasn't the right thing to do. It's not wrong, it's to notice. Okay. How can you be open without spilling out? Okay. Right? That's the mastery. How can you have this openness, but I'm in charge, I'm, I'm still contained. And I think that's what your guys are asking because the spilling out will, it's like a pie crust you roll out too much. Like it gets too thin, and then it starts tearing, and it doesn't have the integral structure to it. Okay. Okay? So I think that's uh, one of the main things your guys want you to know. Because as you move forward, you're going to need that structural integrity. Because more things are coming for you, but you haven't been able to handle it. They're only giving you what you can handle. 
that makes sense? Have you been feeling like things have been paused a little bit lately? Like, I I'm ready, where is it? Come on. Yes. Yeah, that's why. Yes. Okay. But if they can give me a clue, it would be nice. Well, it's not about can they give you a clue. They're, they're, it's not about you're missing it. They're going to go, okay, now you're ready. Okay. It is about the energy structure of your, of your system. If you're a pie crust, they're not going to fill your pie too much because it's going to tear. They're only going to give you what you can structurally handle. So that's why they wanted to start there to pull your energy in so that you can handle... Your guides are dorks, by the way. More fruit filling. <laughs> I'm like, yo, they're cheesy. But you get it, right? I do. You'll handle more. And then, then you're not missing it, and it's not waiting, and it's not late, and you're not wrong. It's just like, okay, I'm ready for more, because you can handle more. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So let go that you're missing out. You're wrong. I, I'm not, okay. I'm not really wrong. I'm just like really ready to move forward. Yeah, yeah. No, and I and and I'm not attached to being right. But what they mean by that is when we're sitting there waiting, I want more, or I don't feel like I'm getting the guidance, or I feel like I'm missing something. It makes us wrong. Okay. So you're not wrong. They're just taking care of you in a way that you can handle it. Okay. So bring it all back in. How can you be open without losing your structure? And then more fruit filling. Okay. They're dorks. I love your guys. They're awesome. They are. Yeah, they're they're like real like cheeky, like like oh more fruit filling. <laughs> they're weird. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And so yes, I will go back to you. I asked and made sure. Like yeah, you're next. <laughs> Tell me your name. I'm Jen. Hi, Jen. Nice to meet you. You have way different guides. I've noticed over time that our guides match our own personalities, and so. Like, you might be a little cheesy, a little kind of goofy, but you are more of a, like, badass in your face. Because they're more like, let's do this. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Like work face. <laughs> <laughs> you got, like, the paint. You're like, let's do this. We're doing it. Okay. <sighs> Is it two ends? Just one. Just one, okay. Open up for me. Breathe. Mm -hmm. You shut the doors, right? It gets tender. You have trust issues around being seen. You're not trusting yourself that you are seenable. Is literally the word they say, <laughs> right? We trust. Uh, bring sorry, bring it back. When we don't trust that our value is worth seeing, we don't let a lot of people see it. And so there's this discrepancy within you of your value, like what your value is in the world. And then that makes it uncomfortable when there's transparency, which you don't allow. You only allow people to see what you want them to see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Again, and I think this is gonna be the theme of the day, nothing's wrong. It's not wrong, it's that it doesn't work for you. There's more over on the other side and I get like lots of chills over here. So let's um, reverse engineer it. If you're over here questioning your value and you're like, I can't let you see because I don't even know what that value is. When they have all this beauty over here, you're not gonna be open for it because you're not thinking you deserve it. It kind of rolls downhill, reverse engineering that way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Your guys talk very fast, so I'm clear. I'm like present that I'm rambling. Okay. <laughs> I'm present that I'm kind of rambling, and I'm like, I'm wanting to make sure you hear it. <laughs> They're like, okay, so this is what we got to do. We got to do this. We got to do this. <laughs> so does that give you a little bit of insight on what to look at? Because it really is about um, the seed, the, the core of it is embracing your value without, I without comparing it to other people. Don't look out into the world and say, I don't do that, I must not be as good. Don't do that, okay? Because I feel like that's where it kind of gets solidified for you, like you have evidence that they're so great and I don't do that, so I must not be great. Like it's the, it's the emotional traumatic math, right? There's so much over here. That's the thing is, if you have been feeling like, where's yours? Where's mine? 
is there, but if you cannot already start working on being open when you do get into that, that direction, you won't be willing or capable of receiving it, okay? So you're not late, and it's not wrong. I think we're starting, there's, there's always themes in galleries. It's not late, you're not wrong. It's there, it's just that you think it's not there because you aren't open to feeling it. If you open yourself, you'll see it. Okay. Okay, good, good. Thanks. <sighs> Everyone take a nice big breath. I love your energies, by the way. This is the first one, first one that I've ever really felt almost everyone is like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> do me, this guy next to me. Like everyone else is like, <laughs> it's okay, right? It's the dynamic. You don't know me very well. I'm asking you to show me your guts. I get it. I'm coming to you next in the red. Hi. Hi. You've been peeking me, haven't you? <laughs> it's okay. I get it. And I think that's what I mean. Like usually people are like, oh my gosh, she's looking at me. But you're like, yes, look at me. <laughs> you're like, yes, you want to see this? <laughs> too much and so people reflect back to you that you're too much so I want to mirror back to you with fuck that <laughs> right high five yes because I'm not incapable of handling you because I too am too much right yeah it's okay right it's understanding <sighs> I'm getting the guidance of it it's understanding that everyone comes from their own place of, of perceived brokenness. And if you shine the light into the cracks, they see their brokenness and they don't know how to deal with it, so they make you wrong for it. That's not your problem, right? Yeah. So shine that light, show all the ugliness, let everybody see their stuff. And when that projection comes onto you, just understand that that's what it is. If I felt ugly and you shined on me your beauty, then I'm going to go, oh, she's so arrogant. She just thinks, because I can't handle my own brokenness. That's what we do. We project. I'm projecting my shadow onto you because you're making me uncomfortable with how bright and shiny you are. But that's not your problem. That's my problem. Right? <sighs> I really wish someone had told me this when I was your age. <laughs> I had to figure that out the hard way. And, and I know you have too, right? I see, I see that, right? It's not your problem though. And I really want you to really, it's not my, my mantra around that is your problem with me is not my problem. With love, I love you, but it's not my problem. So that you can just get that that's where it's coming from. It's coming from their own insecurity of how they perceive you, they see the lack in themselves. That goes for everyone that does anything beautiful, amazing, powerful, art, whatever you put into the world, however, whatever births from you, if it ignites insecurities in someone else, it's not your problem, it's that they see the lack in themselves that you possibly don't have for yourself. And they're gonna be angry at you because you're so good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I catch myself every now and then. I'm like, oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, good. So lovingly give them their experience of having the too much of you. Yeah. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> it's so cool because I, like, even though I was over here, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going over there. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. We're going. Ever take a big breath? This side of the room got nervous when I walked over here. Awesome. <laughs> I love feeling the waves of energy, you guys. You're so great. So
So everyone take a big breath and let's put it all in the fire. Here's the power that you hold. I cannot see you if you do not allow me. That's the power, right? We have that, that much intensity in our frequency where we want to hide, we can hide, right? We've all experienced being invisible and there's a certain amount of safety that goes along with being invisible, um, but that's not what you're here for. So it's, I'm asking that you somehow trust me that you're safe, okay? <sighs> you're gonna go through love. Yes. <laughs> Tell me your name. Raina. 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 Hi. Good. Thank you. Mm, that's uncomfortable, right? Like this, the, the being seen and the, oh shit, she was looking at me. That, <laughs> that moment, right? Okay. There's a, um, you're actually very good with the container. You know how to contain yourself, but it's at your detriment. You hold it together, but it hurts you. And you are screaming for people to see who you really are, but you're not knowing how to make that switch to really show them who you are. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. That was intense. I just want to make sure, like, oh crap, am I on the right track there? Yeah, there's this, um, there's this craving, this little girl energy that wants to play, and it feels like around between 10 and 12, it got kind of stifled and you had to grow up really fast. Maybe there was a role you had to take on and you had to put childish things away. And I'm not attached to being black, it's okay. That's been my whole life. So. <laughs> That might have been more like around the time. Uh, as children, we, we experience breaks, emotional breaks, where there's a wound that happens, right? And so that could have been one of the age ranges where one of those breaks of like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do that now. And it feels like it got put away. But that little girl is like, but I wanna play. And, but you don't know how, like you've not really ever been given permission to do that. Um, so the, the guidance around that, the first, the first step is that um, it gets to be on your terms, where the brain is like, I, I, you have a disconnect between your heart and your head, and I'm hearing the brain go, well, that's, I, mean, I can't do that, I'm, it's not acceptable, and I don't even know how, I, there's a lot of excuses, there's a lot of, right? <laughs> but in the heart, it's like, go finger paint, go to the beach and play, go draw the sand, like you're creative, but you've not allowed yourself to be creative. Because I see a lot of hands-on finger painting and drawing in the sand, so there's a lot of hands creativity there. Um, so go make something. Don't get dirty. Right? It's like you've got to, if you, if you choose to accept your mission, it's like you've got to get in the messiness of it to figure out what it is for you. I think when we grow up as adults, we start looking at um, what's going to be acceptable and what's going to be received and is my family going to be okay with this? Like we, we put ourselves in this box of like, I want to be loved and accepted, so I better not make a mess. But the little girl is like, I want my finger paint, right, where it's all over. So I think the message is in, go ahead and let it be messy and let people have their, their experience of it because whatever they feel is what they feel. Whatever they have is what they have. Their problem with you is not your problem, kind of thing, right? Does that make sense to you? Me earlier you said something. Okay, good, and that's why I repeated it. Um, because just to mirror back to you and reflect back to you, even right now, you are picturesque of proper. Like even with like, like even the, <laughs> the boy you're sitting, right? You're proper. But the little girl is like, screw that, I want to go play, I want to get messy, I want to build forts, and I want to play in mud and, and do these things. So whether you do that literally or not, go ahead and give yourself permission to be messy. Because then what will happen is it'll be a mess, and then you'll fine tune who you are. <coughs> okay? Like in the mess, and then you're like, oh, I really like this. Oh, that's what it is, and it'll start making more sense. But if you don't allow yourself to have the mess, it'll always be proper. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. Yeah. Relax, please. Yeah. Music <clears throat> like, is funny. Yes. Do you really want to say words? Mm -hmm. Right? It gets all tied up in the jaw. Mm -hmm.
Good play. Good play. You're messy. Because I think that'll make more sense as you do it. And, and it'll be messy. Like, we get to accept that it's going to be a mess, that we are a mess, that we don't have the answers all the time. We don't know everything all the time. We're going to fall down and scrape our knees and make mistakes and have the fucked upness. <laughs> That's how we know who we are, is in the contrast of the mess and the beauty. You have to have both to know where you are in the middle. It's a triangulation kind of thing. Like these are our navigational beacons. If you only know one, <laughs> right? We're only leaning into one. So have the, the vastness of both so that you can kind of zero in on, oh, that's my ground. It's a little messy and it's a little proper, but it's, it's it's, um, there's room to breathe. Because if you're only trying to be proper, it gets squished. And that's the only place you can live. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it gives it more. Mm. And that's who we are. We are a little bit of a mess, and we are a little bit on the proper side. We know what's appropriate at times, and we don't at times. So it gets really kind of unpredictable. We are working really hard to be predictable. <laughs> it's safe, right? It's safe. It's my favorite analogy that my guys have given me is it's like playing a game of tag. Okay, remember tag? Tag you're it, and there was always base, and then that one jerk kid that was always like mean and would trick you and all that, right? Base is the comfort zone. But base is only a place to stop and pause catch your breath, and reevaluate your route where you're going to stay away from the guy that's going to attack you. It's a place to stop and pause, but that's not where the game is. The game is in the game, so get off the base. But we, we get really comfortable with our comfort zone, our reasonings. Well, I want it. I know predictability. I, I want that. That's where I feel comfort. But in the meantime, you're missing the game of the unpredictability of life. That's where the the risk and the joy and the, and the adventure is played, okay? So I love that. I, I, speaking to the inner child, I love that. Because I'm like, it's okay. Have a, have a break. Take a breath. Get your, get your next route, which tree you're going to run around and which bush you're going to hide behind. Go do that. But then get in there and you'll have it. Good. Good. Ah, good breath. How are we doing on time? Anyone? Sorry. What time? It's 1140. 11.40. Good. Okay. I had to do math. I had to get my left brain to see that. <laughs> that was not comfortable. Okay. <sighs> yes, yes, yes. You guys are so awake and alive. I love it. So I'm going to come here now with the Navy. What's your name? Galen. Galen, hi. I met you before. Yeah, I you did a reading last six months ago. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. so Oh, yay. <laughs> wow, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I remember energies and faces, but I don't remember names very well. Mm. Yeah. You've been doing clearing work, but it's still in your field. Like, you've pushed it away, but you haven't 100% gotten rid of it. Okay. So I'm going to do some clearing work as I talk. Okay. Okay. Because it's just clutter. And yeah. you're like, it, it's like you've pushed it and you're like, okay, I feel better, but it's still like hanging in your atmosphere. Like okay. space junk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> yeah. Okay. You are, and I don't remember readings, right? But once it's over, it's over. Like the next day I'll forget. But I, I, I can see the change in you. I see that you've done work and you're doing the work. It's just um, letting go of that last bit of attachment. Yeah, I feel like that too. Like there's just like a thread of like, oh, let go. Why do I let it go? Like there's just a little bit of like, what's going to happen if I really let this go? So your comfort zone is in holding on to this stuff that's familiar, even though in your mind, like intellectually, you know it's time to go. But the letting of it, letting it be, and let it actually disappear off into space, fly out of your atmosphere. Who am I without that? 
what am I going to do about that? What's going to happen to me if I don't have that? Like, there's a lot of subconscious thinking in there of what's going to happen. And some of it is people, right? You've got people in your field that you're trying to let go. That, well, to let them be. She does my mother's birthday. Okay. We used to always come here together. She died the end of last year. Oh. And so a lot of that has come up over the last couple of weeks. Okay. And there's some family people also involved in that. Okay. And I don't mean letting go of people that have passed, because it's okay when that comes back around. It just, it means another level of healing for you. And that's okay. When, when we're sad or we mourn or we're having this um, remembering come on to us, that's not a bad thing, right? It's not wrong. I'm seeing more in the sense that it's um, letting people go so that they can make their own mistakes. That's more of what I meant, letting them go, not your mom. Right? You, if she's coming back around and saying hi to you, I am not the person to tell you to get rid of her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would never, and that's, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's okay if that cycles back around and you feel her because she's with you. That's okay, right? The space jump is keeping you from the connection. I keep seeing how I'm doing this figure eight with you. It wants to in, uh, expand you, the energy, your guides, all this uh, growth that you're going through. It wants to expand you. But if you imagine having all this clutter in your field, it weighs you down and then it, it reignites you into that um, drama, not drama, like outward drama, but it still reignites you to all of that energy. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to do that, but you well, got to do it. I was hoping you to tell me. That's what, yeah, I, I want to just get rid of it, but it just keeps cycling. Okay, let's ask if they have something around that, because... Um, <coughs> Yeah. 
when I clap, when you feel the, yeah, just fun. I like it. <sighs> so, Miss, uh, in the blue, right behind the red, yes, tell me your name. Anna. Anna. I've met you before, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> take a couple of breaths because it's it's tight in here. Okay. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, you're good. I'm reading it. That's all. I'm, I'm looking at all of. Have you seen Minority before? <laughs> yes. The screen. Yeah. When I tune into somebody, the screen comes online. It's really technology, you know, like technical in my head, but it's like I can see where things are connecting, and then I go, I'm asking your guys, like, what do you want me to talk about? Yeah. So, it's my process. <laughs> but it is you. I do feel that. Um, you feel the chest or the throat? Yeah, it's yeah. the throat heart connection, and that's usually my signal that you're empathic um, and. You're not embracing it. There's, right. a, there's a resistance there. It's okay. But that's what I meant by I'm trying. Because like I'm, I'm, I've been awake and definitely woke, but I've been resisting. And so like I, that's what I meant by I'm trying. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I feel the desire in you, but I feel the fear in you too. And so it's like this, uh, uh, like this, I don't know what to do. And so when we don't know what to do, we tend to do nothing. Well, and I'm so told by so many other people that I need mean, that. That's the biggest. That's what I, that's everything I was seeing. I was seeing how there's, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can only be pulled by other people if you allow them to pull you. Okay. We were just feeling uh, at our table, we were just feeling the energy and there's a different flow of energy today. It's being able to follow the flow of energy. It's an empath's superpower. So maybe the very first step is to study what being an empath is about. And this goes to all the healers. If you are overwhelmed by the energies that are around you, then, then master your superpower. Okay. Stop being, like it, it, it feels like a curse when we are an empath and we don't know how to work it. Well, I don't have to take care of everybody else. Then, then that's fine. That's not a superpower. No. That's a sacrifice. I make everyone's lives really nice. Like, I'm really That's like great. That, Yay for them. But yeah, it's taking a toll on you. Yes. You're sacrificing yourself. You're not a service. Oh. A service is when I know what I am, and I know my energy, and I know how to support, and I know when to say no. Sacrifice is, oh, take me, take all of it. I'll be fine. No, I'll be fine. <laughs> Right? Yeah. It's the virgin trying to throw herself into the volcano to save her tribe. The volcano's gonna explode anyway, that was for nothing. I'm trying to save her tribe, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Instead, if the virgin got to the top of the mountain, she's like, oh shit, there's a whole other area over there. Come on, people. Oh, That's wow. being a service. It's a really good analogy. Yeah. That resonates. Yeah. Okay. And the responsibility of that is you're not really helping them. I know it looks like that, and there's a, a nice, pretty bow we want to put on top of that of like, but, uh, no, you're not. You're creating addicts, mm -hmm. and you are the drug dealer. For sure. So they're always going to have to come to you when they have a drama. They're always going to have to come to you when they have a breakdown. They're always going to have to come to you to fix whatever is broken in their life because you have taught them that they cannot do it on their own. Do I do that because that's the way I feel I need to get love? Why would I do that? Yeah. Okay. There's a certain element of an empath when they don't realize it, right? When there's there's an evolutionary growth chart. I need to I need to create a growth chart for empaths, <laughs> right? There's a moment when it's like, if you're happy, I'm happy. If I can love you, then you will love me. But it's not real. It's, it's, I'm not saying that they don't love you. I know. I heard you go away. No, I, I came back. Okay. <laughs> like, no, 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 no,
It's really funny to watch that. Like, no, they mm -hmm. love you, of course. This is all subconscious language. Right, but I want them to be at their highest level. I don't want to hurt them, and I don't want to not empower them. So I'm trying to, so I do what you're saying. They have to fall down on their own. Okay. That's how you teach babies how to walk. Right? Okay. <laughs> okay. I get it. Um, does it make sense to you though? Like I know I No, I hear you. I'm here. Your guides are being very like they want in to. your face about it. Yeah. So it, it feels punchy and I'm present that I'm sorry about that. No. But I'm also serving your highest good and I can't pull punches. No, I agree. Do you see what, I, what what it is though, right? Yeah. It feels, or it might even look to you guys where I'm like, that's bullshit, that's bullshit, where I'm hurting her. But there's a difference between placating and coddling and serving your highest good. Right now I'm being a service to you. I'm not making sure that you like me. It feels supportive. It feels good. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you get that? If you can hold that space for your people, they may not always like what you say, but it'll feel supported. And they'll go, oh, right. And now they're walking on their own. So I want you to see this, what we're doing right now. Because just put you in my place and your people in your place. Service can be provided in a way that's non-harming, but still not, I'm not like carrying you. Yeah, I'm tired. Ugh, that's gross. To me, that's gross energy. It's me giving you the message that you can't do it without me. There, there, I've got you. And then you get the message, oh, I feel better, thank you. I'm going to come to you next time I'm broken. And then, sure enough, I'm like, oh, here she comes again. Okay. Right? So flip it around and see you here and your people there. <laughs> Even though this isn't coddling energy, it's still for your highest good, which is actually a service. And I don't feel like you have taken any of my energy. I'm not drained. I don't feel gross afterwards. Right? Does that make sense? Totally. <sighs> Who here resonates with that conversation? <laughs> <laughs> See how you provided a service by being your authentic self? Ah, another layer of it. We are always service if we're in alignment with ourselves and we're being true to our energy and we're holding our, we're holding all of those, uh, the structural, uh, thank you, I remember now, the structural energy of who we are. You can be a service without being this buffet, letting everybody eat off you and suck your energy dry. You're like this little dried up, Peach pit thing. <laughs> oh. Right? Yeah. I am told that we are out of time. I wish I could stay here all day with you guys. You have made this morning so great for me. Um, just a little side note. This is my last expo. I'm so sad. My husband and I are moving to Boise. I don't want to cry. <laughs> My husband and I are moving to Boise, Idaho, and I'm just so grateful that you're here today. Thank you for spending time with me. I have a table. I have a book. I have yummy stuff over there. If you want to come over and just talk with me, I'm happy to. If you want to stay in touch with me, I will be coming back to Dallas for events, and I've got plans. So I would love to stay in touch with you and, and share more space with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.